The first thing we want to do is to look at a little section of tree trunk. Now when you look at it straight down like this, it looks like a circle. Now notice, watch the circle, what happens to it when we start to tip it like this. Do you see how it gets to be an oval shape like that? And if we keep tipping it, it's nothing but a straight line now. You can't see the top at all, right? So we tip it back. We see this oval shape and then a bigger oval and a bigger oval and finally we get back to having it look like a circle. So if we can do this on our paper, we can make it look like this tree trunk is 3D in perspective. So what we want to do, I'm going to draw it at about like this angle, pretend we're looking at a trunk kind of like that, this. So we want to draw an oval like this. That'll be the top, right? Because we know if we were looking at it straight down, it was going to look like a circle, but we're not. We're tipping it, so it's going to look like an oval. However, these lines here still go straight down. These lines stay straight. No matter how we look at it, this line stays straight. It gets shorter or longer, but it stays straight. So we can actually make this as short or as long as we want to. If you want to make a big thick piece of trunk stem, you can make those lines longer. And when you get to the bottom, these lines are going to be the same length. Okay, like if you drew across, it would be the same length. When you get to the bottom, you want to draw this shape again exactly. The same curve exact same curve that you drew up there, drew on the bottom. So there you have your basic shape. Now let's see, the center or the pith where the stem started to grow, you can see on here, the pith is this little tiny thing here, would be right about there, halfway here and halfway here, right in the middle. Now, these rings, these growth rings, where the xylem and phloem got larger every year. Okay, this is, you can see the, uh, the, the, the darker and lighter places alternate areas of growth and areas of rest. And uh, where, the, where they're larger, the tree had a lot of growth. And where they're thinner, it had not so much growth. So what we want to do is we want to basically imitate this, this uh, same shape again. This is a little bit tricky because um, it's a little bit it's a little bit hard to make them narrow enough. And you don't have to worry if it's not perfectly perfect. Now we have a shorter distance here to go out. So let's say let's make six rings. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we know those rings are going to be a circle here. One, two, three, four, five, six. But when you tip it, so one, two, three, four, five, six. This, the sides of the rings are going to hit here this way. But look, we have all this amount of space this way. One, two, three, four, five, six. So your ellipse is going to go like this. You could do the same thing here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Evenly spaced marks. So you know you have to shoot for the second ring. We'll go to there, the third ring. We'll go out to here. Now this, this looks might look kind of strange because there, these, there's so much space here. These are so close together here and there's so much more space. And the left side of your brain is going to be thinking, well, that's not right because they're not 
they're not circles and it's spaced differently that can't be right but actually in perspective it is okay your next string going out to here like that Mm, but they don't have to be absolutely perfect. Well, tree rings sometimes aren't perfect either. Okay, so that just gives you an idea of where your rings are going to go. And this outer layer here is where, where the bark is. Now, this is fairly thin bark on this piece. We can make some thicker bark. Um, let's go around the outside let's pretend the bark is kind of very textured let's make a wavy line outside here it's going to be our very most outer line and then on the inside here now if we want to clean it up a little bit you can get rid of these little marks that's what's nice about working in pencil you can erase and redraw because you probably don't want those little marks in your final drawing. We can clean that up there in a minute. Okay, so let's do an inner edge to this bark area around here. And this is going to be, you can even darken it a little bit in the back, top of our bark. The bark is the phloem, the xylem are the rings on the inside. The phloem is always this section where it starts right here. Okay. And the phloem is where the sap flows in the spring. So when you tap into a tree, you only have to tap into this outer portion. You don't have to go all the way to the center because there's no sap in the center. Okay. Now. All right. So I'll leave you to tidying up these rings later if you want to. Get the general impression there. Okay. So let's make this bark going down here. Everywhere where there's an indent, I'm going to kind of make it a little bit darker, like that's kind of an area where the bark goes in. We're making this very, very textured bark. Okay, and then let's, let's just imagine some shapes. Bark just kind of looks like all different shapes. Let's just split it up. Has the shapes create another little chunk here like this. Now if you make these chunks, what we're doing is we're drawing where it's it goes in, the deep ruts are dark, and then the parts that stick out are lighter. Kind of shadowing into the interior there. to the bottom we can also kind of make it go in like this where you come down wherever you come down you can make it go in okay and let's go down here like I said it doesn't matter exactly your bark pieces do not have to look like mine bark there's a lot of different kinds of bark, a lot of different textures, different little pieces come in different shapes. You can hardly go wrong when you draw bark.
Now if you want to make this look a little round this way, you can see here, let's see, put my piece here. You can see there's some shadowing. I'll have light coming from either side here, so it's dark in the middle and lighter on the side. If I put my hand here, you can see that it's light here and darker here. It makes it look curved. So you could choose, if you want to choose that the light is coming from this direction, then you would shade this side. If the light's coming from here, you would shade this side. I'm going to choose that the light's coming straight down like this. And I'm going to shade both sides a little bit. I, what I want to do is darken the whole thing, but I still want to keep the... Uh, still want to keep the pattern. So I'll just have to make these shadow lines a little bit darker too. Make everything just a little bit darker. Okay, so that kind of looks a little bit more like it's kind of rounded a little bit. Okay, you could also try this project, get her get her actual um, piece of trunk like this. Once you've tried this one, get a real one and look at it and see if you can draw that exact one. If you want to add more rings, it's easy to do. You could just go in in between here like this. Well, the more rings you add, that makes the tree older because pretty much every year it grows a new ring. So you can count the age of the tree. We're not so sure in the ancient past if this is true, but it is pretty much true nowadays. That the, these trees, these rings represent annual growth patterns. Okay, and then we can even let's put the cracks a little bit going in like this. So it looks like it's going all the way into the... There we go. 